Greetings everyone and welcome to my channel. I'm your host Captain Ryan. Today's video comes to us from Evren, and Evren is not in the Minotaur. Instead, Evren is in another Tier 10 cruiser here in World of Warships. That Tier 10 cruiser is of course the USS Des Moines, and just to piss off a bunch of people, the USS Des Moines. The battle is the Atlantic map, it's domination match mode, and Evren is headed up towards the B cap point, but he's not headed directly into it. Obviously, is a tier 10 battle. Probably not the best idea to head straight into that cap point without some destroyer support, and definitely not without some spotting and maybe some battleship backup. Now, as you can see, the vast majority of Evren's team is concentrated down towards the A cap point. This is not unusual in this particular map with this particular map mode. To see a bunch of people, especially on this spawn side of the map, to head towards the A cap point. But it's also not unusual to see a bunch of people head towards the C cap point. Now, enemy team has managed to secure the B cap point. Everton is close enough that he goes ahead, he pops that radar. Now the radar on the Des Moines is pretty short. It's only 9.6 kilometers. There's definitely some Russian bias here why the Russians have better longer radar that gets out to 11.6 kilometers I just don't know the US radar was definitely superior but he pops it anyway spots the enemy gearing and now that gearing is having a horrible hard time because you see there he was stopped in his smoke screen and unfortunately Evren doesn't secure the kill on that gearing but he did put the vast majority of hurt onto him so that gearing is dead that's one less destroyer that his team has to worry about and now the only destroyer left on the enemy team is the enemy Harborovsk and you can see he popped up there for a split second but that guy has decided not gonna try and engage a Des Moines so I'm bugging out of here now, if you find yourself in a destroyer, a Des Moines is definitely a ship you want to keep your distance from. Keep your distance at that 9.8, 10 kilometer range, just inside your torpedo range, but well outside his radar range. And even if you do close into that eight kilometers, if he pops the radar, the best way to counter that threat is to effectively just turn your ship around, hit that speed boost and put distance between you and him. Now you'll notice that Evren had the radar up there and it didn't just last 30 seconds, it was up for 45 seconds. So I'm thinking Evren's got that radar module, that special module, probably from a loot crate or possibly a season of ranked. And that means 45 seconds. 30 seconds is already a pretty long time when you're playing in a destroyer. But when you have a cruiser like the Des Moines, it really comes into its own. I mean, 30 seconds, having radar up in this ship is excellent because it means you can get three full salvos away. In fact, you can get more than three full salvos away. You can get five full salvos away if your guns are loaded once you pop that and you're able to get shots off. Having it up for 45 seconds, even more. Remember, the Des Moines is able to put out something like 90 rounds a minute. It has a reload rate of six seconds with those eight inch guns. So that eight inch high explosive really wreaks havoc on destroyers. It really wreaks havoc on battleships. They talk about the Zhao being a fire starter. Well, personally, in my opinion, the Henry is a much better fire starter just because it has bigger guns. It's also a better armor piercing cruiser because again, it has bigger guns, so it'll overmatch most cruiser bow armor. But let's not forget the Des Moines. It might have a lower percentage chance for fire, but it has a way higher rate of fire, so it can just get out there. The downside, of course, you can see how long these shells are in the air. That Missouri is using the wrong camo, but that Missouri is not that far away, but Evren's got two salvos in the air before his first shots land. Now, Evren's team has managed to secure the B cap point, they secured the A cap point, and they're in the process of challenging C. They're not able to get it. There are a couple of ships up there that are challenging it. But you can see most of the fight going on here is definitely down and around the B cap point. The enemy team wisely pulling out of the A area. There's no way they're gonna be able to take that. What they need to do in order to challenge at this point is to head up to the C cap point and contest B. 
And that's pretty much what they're doing. Now, Everin's being very smart here. He's using this island as solid rock cover. Personally, I find it the most annoying thing when cruisers do this, but it's a very, very smart move. It basically gives them that solid cover and prevents ships from dropping shells over that. The only ships that are going to be able to effectively drop shots over is going to be something like an Atlanta. Those high super rainbow arcs to be able to get over and drop shells on top of you because you're so close to that island. But of course, the downside of that is you can't shoot at anything that's over there. You can only shoot at things that are directly in front of you. And it also means that you're limited in what you can see. So you're not really helping your team as far as spotting goes. So you absolutely have to have somebody in a destroyer or another cruiser or even an aircraft carrier have planes up and around so you know what's coming around that island. Because again, for all you know, there could be that harbor off lurking around just on the other side of that island. And he knows you're there because his your shots have been coming out. He could just come around that island and cause some significant problems. Now, Everin also has the defensive fire consumable. The Des Moines is one of those ships. It's an American cruiser, so the American AA with this consumable is absolutely deadly to carriers. But personally, I think that the De AA on the Des Moines is good enough by itself that I don't actually need this, and I actually prefer to take the Hydro because nobody expects the Des Moines to have Hydro. And it's always fun to catch enemy destroyers who think they've beat my radar only to watch them react funny to the fact that I have Hydro. Cyclone has begun. That means visibility is going to be reduced at this point. The enemy team has lost three ships. Everyone's team has lost two ships, but Everyone's team definitely up here with the points because they have the A and B cap point. The enemy team has managed to secure the C cap point, and I think the kills that they've managed to gain are for the isolated groups at sea. Now, what needs to happen is the remaining people up at sea really do need to push back south and regroup with their teammates at B. Now, Everin has decided he's going to go ahead and push out past his rock armor here, and he's going to push up to get more shots on. He's engaging a Mogami or an Ibuki here at range, and you can see how quickly this ship reloads. Now, the Cyclone has finally reduced the visibility to the point where no longer detected. He can no longer get shots out there, but his remaining shots, like I said, the arcs on this, so long, still landing well after no longer detected. That cruiser's probably not happy about that, thinking, damn, game mechanics. Enemy team has lost yet another ship, so they're down four ships to Everin's two. But this game is still pretty young, and it could go either direction. And now that the Cyclone's up, really, you have to be careful when you're playing in games where Cyclones are detected and end up coming in. You really do not want to get caught out alone in a cruiser or a battleship in these kinds of situations. And you don't want to do that because sneaky buggers and destroyers like myself will show up and will just effectively start wrecking you. So if you find yourself detected, you're isolated, and you can't see what's detecting you, it's a destroyer. Start taking evasive maneuvers. Aircraft spotted Everin just for a brief second, but again, that anti-aircraft so destructive on this cruiser really instantly just takes out those planes and he's no longer detected. Not that it would matter anyway. The way these storms work, if you're not familiar, is that it reduces the vis visibility to 8 kilometers. Unless you have radar. Now, radar will extend your range to the sight range of the radar. So, in the Des Moines case, it's really not that much more. It's only about 9.5 kilometers. Everyone pops this radar, extends that range, but he's spotted anyway. He's close enough, really, that opening up with guns wouldn't matter here. Enemy destroyer, that's the Harborovsk. He's popped up again. And this time, Everin's going to go ahead and start focusing him down. Since he's got his radar up, he might as well take advantage of his rate of fire and try and kill him before he gets out of detectability. The major downside, of course, in this situation is now you've got three ships. You're all in detection range. But notice that Everin's no longer being detected. It's because the closest ship to him is actually further, or well, is actually behind some rocks. 
and the other two ships are further away, so it's really the radar that's detecting them at this point. Of course, his friendly div mate up there is close enough to those ships that he is being detected by them. Now this cruiser over here really not having a good time of it, and who is going to get the kill on that cruiser, or did that cruiser actually manage to sneak away? I don't think he did. So far, Evern has managed to do 115,000 damage in this game, but actually hasn't managed to kill anything. Always the bridesmaid, never the bride in this case, unfortunately. Enemy team is pushing up, and they're challenging the B-cap point. Now, there are some teammates down in the B-cap point, so they are contesting it and preventing it. The enemy team has really lost a lot of ships, so it's going to be really difficult for them to continue to contest that location, but you never know. Now, like I was saying with the Cyclone here, because of the distances, even if you find yourself one or two kilometers away from a friendly ship, because it's eight kilometers maximum, it means that your friendly ship could be getting shot at and you can't return fire at the enemy that's shooting at them because you can't see the enemy. You might see him on the mini-map, but you cannot see him. Everyone's shooting armor-piercing into this battleship Moskova here. And he's not having very good luck of it. I would have actually switched over to the high explosive at this point and just pumped round after round into the superstructure here. As you can see, a lot of bounces. Hence why they call it Battleship Moscow. Well, one reason. The other reason, it being so ginormous. Evren finally does switch over to the high explosive, and he's going to go ahead and pump that right into the superstructure. But enemy ship gets taken out by his friendly div mate before he can actually secure the kill. Again, going into that kind of thing, if you find yourself against another angled cruiser, even in the Des Moines with its heavy American piercing AP shells, you really do need to consider using that high explosive. It's not like this cruiser is a battleship where armor piercing is the only shell you need. The high explosive, again, does do a reasonable amount of damage and can certainly inflict some pain and suffering. And if you're getting a lot of bounces like that, you can aim a little bit higher into the superstructure, but you're going to get a lot of shatters and overpenetrations. And remember, you can damage saturate parts of ships. So in this particular case, it might have been possible to damage saturated it. Switch over to the high explosive and try and set a fire. That's my recommendation in that situation. Could have definitely secured that kill a little bit sooner. Enemy team has actually managed to pull back the uh, scores just a little bit. They've actually secured the B camp point, and they're in the process of pushing up towards the C cap point. Everyone's team is in the process of securing the C cap point, and nobody wants to go down to A, which is a little surprising. However, the enemy team has managed to pull the ship's scores back as well. Look at that. They're starting to pick off ships one at a time. Again, the danger of the cyclone. Everyone's div mate here meets his sticky end. The hands of this enemy battleship, this Kerfurst. Ooh, this could be dangerous. Now, everyone's got a lot of health, but it's a Kerfurst. That could cause some significant problems. Of course, the Kerfurst cannot get a full broadside out because he's got to avoid the torpedoes laid down by his div mate in the Hindenburg. And Hindenburg torpedoes, they absolutely hurt if you get hit by them. But look, this Kerfurst, he's on fire in so many places, he's burning down. The question is, who's gonna get the kill on him? Can Evern secure his first kill in the game after doing 170,000 damage? Switches back over to the armor piercing, Kerfurst is giving broadside. I don't know if I would necessarily do that, but it works out. And that Kerfurst is finally dead, and finally our hero secures his first kill in the game after 173,000 damage done, and already earning himself a high, uh, a confederate, but not a high caliber. Hello, oh, let's see if we can fix that. Another battleship Moskova pops up here, broadside on to a number of ships. This friendly ship over there fires high explosive into him. I'm surprised. I would have actually derped armor piercing. It would have been a perfect kill. However, as you can see there, again, that armor piercing at this kind of angle just bouncing right off that ship. Now, everyone can see these ships, even though they're behind a rock there, because he's got his radar up, but he's paying a lot of attention to those ships, and he's not really paying attention to the cruiser that's off to the side of him here. He's got an island between him and the cruiser. But in this particular situation, I would also be paying attention to that guy because he's 
continuing to push up. Now, of course, there are a couple of very high value threats here. And as you can see, this cruiser pushing around here, I think that's the Moskva, broadside on, can Evren secure the kill? Come on, yes, manages to nail that. Of course, broadside on, not gonna have a fun time there. Secondaries on the Des Moines opening up there takes a big hit of high explosive. That's going to be from the cruiser again. Got to pay attention to what's pushing up there. And I probably would have had my guns already turning this direction. But look at this broadside on here. But only over penetrations. That sucks. And it is an Ibuki out here who's firing high explosive. Very wise of the Ibuki. He's got a good chance for fire with those 8 inch guns there. But he's got to stop broadsiding. Jesus. Double Citadel there. Everyone's going to avoid the first set of torpedoes pretty easily. But you'll notice he doesn't want to get hit by the second set of torpedoes. At the same time, he's got to push up past the rocks around this island if he wants to get continuing shots down range and this Ibuki is playing pretty smart he's trying to get that island between him and Everin he's trying desperately but doesn't quite make it and that's actually going to be the end of the battle there securing victory for Everin's team Everin only managing three kills in that game but 208,000 damage did secure himself a confederate and a high caliber in that battle a good number of citadels a good number of aircraft shot down but you notice, like I said before, with the defensive fire, he didn't end up using it too much in the game because it was on cooldown when the enemy aircraft carrier sent more planes over, and yet he still managed to rip them apart. Of course, top of the team for XP earned at over 3,000 base XP in this battle. Anyway, that's it for today's video, folks. If you liked the video, hit that like button, hit the subscribe and follow button, leave a comment on the video. If you'd like to get semi-regular channel news and updates, you can do so by liking and following me on Facebook. If you'd like to help support me in the channel, as well as gain additional perks, you can do so by becoming my supporter on Patreon. If you've got a replay like this one that you'd like to see featured on my channel, you can send it to my email. And if you'd like to watch me play various games live at intermediate uh, scheduling, you can do so by following me on Twitch. You can find the links for all of those in the video description down below. And as always, I'll see you next time. This is Captain Rye. Signing off.